السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We'll talk about the aseptic technique and how we will audit or how we'll do the audit for this element at the time we are visiting or auditing the hospitals. Uh, the aseptic technique it is element four from domain B. Aseptic technique is contain 18 sub element and the activity for this auditing uh, for the aseptic technique it will be documentation, staff interview and observation and the scoring it will be 0 or 1 or 2 and some of these sub elements it can be not applicable if it is really not applicable in the hospital. We will start with the first sub-element B4.1. There is a written policy and procedures for clean, aseptic, and sterile techniques. We need for documentation. We can do. We can review and we can audit and evaluate this sub-element. You need to review the policy and procedure for the aseptic technique and uh, you should be sure that it is comprehensive and well descriptive and it should be cover all the aseptics of the clean aseptic and sterile technique and it should be including but not limited to the proper preparation, dilution and preservation of medication in designated area which should be physically uh, separated from uh, the patient treatment area and also it should be including the essential safe practice for the invasive procedure like the uh, required devices, supply, antisepsis and recommended personal protective equipment. And also it will be including the safe practice required for the inserting peripheral venous catheter as example fixing, dressing, labeling and replacement of the peripheral venous catheter. The policy also it should be including uh, the recommended aseptic technique and safe practice for preparation and use of the single dose medication file, single use ampoules and also multi dose uh, medication files and also single use devices uh, like syringe or needles and also single patient devices uh, like insulin pen and reusable devices, IV solution bottles, IV set and including uh, the secondary set and also the ventilation circuits, 
humidifier, nebulizer, and other air solo generating system. Also, the policy it should be including the necessary safe practices uh, for uh, urinary catheterization and handling or collecting the urine bag, like the required supply, antisepsis, recommended personal protective equipment, and the procedures. Also, including the safe practice required for the spinal or epidural space catheterization or injection, uh, the required uh, supply, antisepsis and the recommended personal protective equipment and procedures. Also, the policy it should be fully applicable. That means all the elements of policy can be applied and comply with the hospital scope of services. And also, this uh, policy should be based on scientific reference and it should be approved by Ministry of Health like GCC, CDC, WHO and EBIC. Here we want to mention that uh, another hospitals or we cannot use the another hospitals uh, like reference for us it's not acceptable it should be this uh, reference it should be scientific reference and approved by ministry of health like what we mentioned gcc uh, who abic or cdc
the policy it should be signed from authorized person you need to check who's the one signed this uh, policy it should be signed by the authorized person like the hospital director or the medical director and also it should be approved by the infection control committee and it should be uh, valid and updated within two or three years and when indicated Sub element B4.2 Separate clean area is available and maintained for preparation of medication should be away from patient treatment area. For this we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. You need to observe the availability of dedicated medication preparation area which should be uh, physically separated from the patient treatment area and this uh, medication preparation area it should be dedicated for the prepare of the medication you should be sure that they are not used as a store for patient equipment or store for anything or for eating or for rest it should be only for the preparation of the medication and also this medication preparation area uh, should be uh, provided with control ventilation and monitoring for the recording temperature which should be from 22 to uh, 24 degree and also the humidity which should be uh, relative humidity up to 70 percent you need also to be observed and sure that this medication preparation area have at least one hand washing sink 
and this hand washing sink it should be occupied with hot and cold water plain and antimicrobial soap and towels you need to open the water for this hand washing sink to be sure there is water and there is hot and cold water and you need to sure that they have already the plain and antimicrobial soap and towels also this preparation or uh, medication preparation area it should be have at least one alcohol based hand drop dispenser you need also to use this uh, or check this alcohol based hand drop dispenser and contain alcohol gel it is not empty and also at your visit for this uh, patient area or sorry for this medication preparation area there is any patient uh, required for medication during your visit you can observe the responsible of the nurse and how they will be uh, prepared this medication they will prepare it inside the medication preparation area or they will be prepared in another place and they will go for this patient it should be prepared in the dedicated uh, medication preparation area For the interview, you can ask the healthcare worker, and this is some examples for the questions you can ask the healthcare worker. You can ask them about where is the area it is specified for the medication preparation, and also you can ask them about uh, how are you prepared medication. You can ask them to they will be good for you uh, uh, dose of the multiple uh, dose vial, and they will be uh, uh, prepared in front of you, and you can observe if they are following. The, the, the policy and procedure for the uh, aseptic technique and also you can ask them about the uh, indirect question like uh, where is the, uh, you are preparing the medication if there is uh, no available separate clean area and you can also ask them about uh, indirect question and you can check if they are storing uh, uh, patient equipment before sending to the CSSD and also uh, storing of the other patient use it inside this uh, uh, medication preparation area or no you can ask them about how you are keeping uh, patient equipment before sending to the CSSD or how you will be uh, uh, storing the patient uh, used uh, supplies sub element p 4.3 for in place procedures sterile devices and supply are used after patient skin antisepsis sterile syringe needles and medication are used after skin antisepsis with approved antiseptic wipes for this sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit the sub element for the observation you need to visit the medical store and the medication preparation area and you will be absorbed if there is sterile devices and supply required for the MPS procedure it is a valuable inadequate amount in the medical store 
and the medication preparation area or not because if this amount of the device and supply are inadequate that it is more likely to they will be utilized uh, unsterile item and they will be ignored the skin antisepsis they will be reused the single use supplies also you can absorb the medical store and the medication preparation area if there is any open sterile devices or supply like there is open syringe or needles or wound, wound dressing or also the procedure kit and also the single uh, use medication uh, and uh, they are keep it uh, for use later for the uh, basic procedure for the same patient or no because this practice or this uh, prohibit uh, it is uh, not acceptable mm -hmm. even if they will be used for the same patient and also if they will be labeled with the patient name or uh, not uh, should be not used it uh, for or reuse it uh, for the same patient you need to do interview with the staff and you can ask them about what are the type of the devices and supply required for the uh, specific invasive procedure example for the intramuscular injection or peripheral venous catheter insertion wound tracing for catheter insertion and they should be give you the correct answer that's uh, mean uh, only sterile devices and supply are used for the invasive procedure after patient skin antisepsis and also you can assess their awareness about the sterile devices and supply that should be use it for the invasive procedure and the importance of the patient procedure site antisepsis and you can ask them about this and you can check if they know the good answer or no that means the sterile uh, single use devices or items are uh, exclusive used only for a single invasive procedure and in a single patient and it should be not be stored for a uh, uh, future uh, reuse even if the, for the same patient
here also another uh, examples for uh, a question you can use it and ask the healthcare worker at the time of the interview uh, you can review and uh, read the infection control audit manual and you can see more examples for question you can use it and also with the correct answer sub element b4.4 a peripheral venous catheter is properly fixed with the clearly written date of insertion and to reduce risk of infection and uh, phlebitis it is replaced if it's still needed as follow uh, for the adult it is uh, not replaced more uh, frequently than every 72 to 96 hours and for the children it will be replaced only when clinically indicated for this sub element we need for observation and also for the staff interview to we can evaluate and uh, do the audit and uh, for this uh, sub element for the observation you need to visit number of patients to observe the fixed peripheral venous uh, catheter and uh, you can assess if the peripheral venous catheter are fixed properly and it's better they will be used the transparent uh, sterile dressing and also you need to check the date of the insertion are clearly written it have the date and time and the responsible healthcare worker who insert this uh, uh, peripheral venous catheter and also you can ask the patient about the insertion time of the peripheral venous catheter to ensure that the healthcare worker strictly follow the peripheral venous catheter related policy and also you, you can check any peripheral venous catheter that it is conflicting with the recommended the duration of the replacement in the adult you can observe of, uh, how frequently they are changing peripheral venous catheter in adult and also in the children you can also uh, check the peripheral venous catheter and you be sure that uh, uh, they are inspected uh, each shift uh, to be removed of uh, if there is any sign of inflammation or infiltration and also if there is any sign you can check uh, the uh, peripheral venous catheter and you can check if there is any sign that in indicated the replacement of peripheral venous catheter that there is maybe uh, you will found some uh, uh, peripheral venous catheter have a sign of inflammation or infiltration and this is that means they are not changing at uh, there is any required for changing this uh, peripheral venous catheter for the interview you need to do interview and asking the healthcare worker but you want to mention that instead of the direct question indirect one in or scenario it's better and you can ask about, uh, for the staff about what are the recommended safe practice for the inserting peripheral venous catheter and you need to focus it about the fix it and also for the dressing labeling and the replacement of the peripheral venous catheter and also you can ask them about how frequently should you inspect the peripheral venous catheter for any sign that indicated for a replacement like there is any inflammation or infiltration and we mentioned before uh, it should be uh, changing uh, uh, when indicated like this uh, case and also you can ask them about what are the different indication for replacement of the peripheral venous catheter for the adult and also for the children and the answer we mentioned it in the previous slides you need also to assist their awareness about the indication for the replacement of the peripheral venous catheter uh, either it's uh, for the time related or for the clinically basic you can ask about how you manage a peripheral venous catheter if there is any sign of infiltration or inflammation or there is any block you are absorbed you need to wait for the answer that means they should be changed immediately because it is one from the indication to replacement the peripheral venous catheter Sub element B4.5 the preparation and dilution of the medication are only done by ready made single dose derived solution. For this sub element, you need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. For the observation, you need to visit and check the medical uh, store and also you need to check the medication preparation area. You need to check if there is any ready made single dose sterile solution bottle of appropriate size are uh, available in adequate amount of the in the medical uh, store or not. And also you need to check it if it is uh, uh, available in the medication preparation area or not because if the amount of this item are uh, inadequate or not adequate or there is any shortage of the supply it's more likely to they are use the large IV solution bottle for the preparation and dilution of the medication and you need to check also if there is 
any open large IV solution bottle in any medication preparation area it is for the preparation and dilution of medication we need to know that the large IV solution bottle should be not used for the preparation and dilution of the medication even it is for the same, same patient uh, even if they will be labeled with the patient name or not or also even if there is a label for the date and the time of the first use or not For the interview, you can uh, do the interview and asking the staff some question, uh, even uh, direct or indirect question. But as you mentioned, the indirect question or scenario, it's better. You can ask them about what are the type of solution that they should be used for the preparation and uh, dilution of the different medication, and they should be give you the correct answer that they are used the ready-made single dose sterile solution uh, for the uh, preparation and dilution of this medications and also you can ask about the recommended safe practice for the using IP bottle uh, for the preparation and dilution of the different medication uh, as you talk about uh, regarding correct storage for the future reuse proper technique and labeling with date and time and the discarding when indicate after uh, expiration or for uh, after uh, reuse life and they should be also tell you uh, or give you that only the ready-made single-use slide solution portal is used for the preparation and dilution for the single procedure or single injection in the single uh, patient and it should not be stored for reuse even for the same patient whether there is labeling or no and also you can ask about what are the precautions that they should be strictly followed when the using of IP portal in the dilution and preparation of different medication for the same 
patient or you can ask about how can uh, you safely keep any remaining amount after using ready-made single dose uh, sterile solution bottle for preparation and dilution of a different uh, medication and we know that the IV solution bottle should be not used for preparation and uh, dilution of the medication and also uh, even for the same patient whether there is labeling or no and also uh, uh, there is no uh, not allowed to keep any uh, remaining amount of uh, after re after using for the uh, ready made single uh, dose they should be discarded immediately after they will be used even the remaining they will be immediately discarded
sub element B4.6 single dose or single use vial is used for a single procedure or injection in a single patient single dose or single uh, use vial is not stored for future use even uh, on the same patient for this uh, sub element we need for observation and for staff interview to we can audit and evaluate this sub element For the absorption, you need to visit and check the medical store, medication preparation area, and also the patient care area. You need to check if the single dose or single use vials is used for a single procedure or injection in a single patient or not. You can absorb if a single dose vial are available in adequate amount or not because if there is a shortage or inadequate, it's more likely to they are reuse it the same item and also you can observe and check if there is any item are kept with a remaining dose you can check if there is a single dose vial or single uh, uh, dose of uh, ampoule because the the single dose of vial it should not be kept open uh, with any remaining dose either if there is label or no for the same patient or no it should be uh, discarded immediately after uh, they will be used This is some examples uh, how you will be check and observe if they are using the single dose vial uh, uh, for single procedure or injection uh, and a single patient or no. You can check the refrigerator and you maybe will find any open single use vial and also it should be or it's maybe with the label with the patient name and the, the medical record number. That means they are using uh, this single dose uh, vial for the same patient and this is also it is not acceptable because it is single dose okay that means they will use it one time and they will remove it and also maybe we will found some uh, uh, single dose uh, vial it's open already in the refrigerator without name this is maybe uh, they are used it or this is indicate uh, and uh, this is that means they are used this single dose vial for a uh, multiple patient and this is also not acceptable they should be discarded immediately after they will be used for the interview you need to do interview uh, with the staff and you need to ask the healthcare worker uh, some question indirect and direct question you can ask them about the best practice recommended for the use of the single uh, dose vial and also you can ask them about for how many patients and how we will keeping remaining dose for the future reuse and save reuse uh, life and also you can ask them about what are the precautions that you should be uh, following if you storing the remaining uh, dose of the single use uh, vial for the future use on the same patient and also you can ask about how you can uh, safely inject uh, the multiple patient from one uh, single uh, use medication vial also you can ask them uh, how uh, they will be deal with the single uh, use vial after taking a small dose of the uh, patient uh, discharged already and this is all of this question it is indirect question this is only they will you see how they are dealing with the single dose vial and we mentioned as before that the single dose or single use vial it should be used uh, only for uh, a single procedure or single injection in a single patient and also it should be not keep it uh, and open it with any remaining uh, dose whether they are labeling or with the patient or no and also they should be uh, avoid the storing for the future use even uh, on the same patient this is the correct answer that you should be listening uh, from the uh, healthcare worker when you are asking them 
sub element B4.7 needles and syringe including pre-filled syringe and the percutaneous holders are used for single procedure or injection for this sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element for the observation you need to check and visit the medical store and the medication preparation area and also the patient care area you need to check if the needle and syringe including the pre-filled syringe and the percutaneous holders are used only for a single procedure or injection or not you can absorb if there is any item are available in the adequate amount if it is more likely to reuse this uh, item if it is if it is the amount it is uh, uh, inadequate or there is any shortage of the supply and also you can absorb if these items are kept sterile and with uh, their original intact web or no they should be uh, not kept opened and uh, or labeled with uh, a name of patient uh, it should be avoid uh, the reuse of these uh, items or storing uh, for the future use even not uh, for uh, on the same patient and also for the examples, you can uh, check uh, the medication refrigerator and you maybe will found open pre-filled syringe labeled with the patient name and medication uh, record number. And this is mean that they are stored for the future use and they will be used for the same patient. And also you can check the medication refrigerator also and maybe you will found open pre-filled syringe with uh, outpatient name or uh, without patient medical record. And this is that they are used uh, for the multiple patient. For the interview, we need to do the interview with the healthcare worker and you will be asking and here is some example for some question you can ask the healthcare worker, you can ask them about what are the best practice recommended for use the needle or syringe including the pre-filled syringe and the vacutainer holders regarding number of patients or the keeping them for the reuse and the safe reuse life and also you can ask them about what are the precautions that should be strictly followed when they are storing the remaining dose in the uh, 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 pre-filled syringe for the future use on the same patient and uh, how can you uh, safely inject multiple patients from one syringe filled with a large dose of medication and also you can ask him about how they will be deal with the vacutainer holders after the taking sample and uh, patient uh, discharges uh, this is all it is indirect question and you can see if they are uh, reusing uh, for all of these uh, items and the answer or the correct answer that you should be listen from them that the needles and syringe including the preferred uh, syringe or the percutaneous holder are used uh, for only one patient or one uh, and one in one patient for one procedure or one injection and they uh, should not be keep it opened or labeled with any patient name uh, to avoid the uh, reuse uh, for the uh, or storing of the this uh, items for future use even for the same patient Sub element B4.8 cartridge devices such as insulin pin are used for only one patient. For this sub element, we need for observation and staff interview to we can audit and evaluate this uh, sub element. For the observation, you need to check the medication preparation area. You can check the refrigerator for the medication and you can see if there is any uh, uh, insulin pin. It is available and it's open. Okay, and you can ask them about if it is open uh, uh, insulin pin. You can ask if it is this for uh, one patient or it is for multiple uh, patients. If the healthcare worker is answering you that it is for the one patient only you need to be sure that it's have a label with the uh, correct data it should be have the patient name and also the medical record number and also uh, uh, should be used only for one patient and also it should be have uh, the date for the 
very stupid use of this uh, insulin pin and also uh, you can check this refrigerator if there is any open uh, insulin pin without any uh, information or there is uh, no any data like patient name and medical record and this is mean that they are used for the multiple patient you should be sure that this insulin pin or the cartridge uh, devices it is used for one patient and there is a label with correct data for uh, the same patient for the interview you need to do interview with the staff and ask them about if they are using the cartridge devices such as the insulin pin and if they give you answer that yes they are using the insulin pin you need to ask them about it is used for one patient or for multiple patient if they answering you that it is used for one patient only you need to ask them about the essential data required to be recorded on the cartridge devices and they should be give you the correct answer that uh, there should be the patient name and medical record to be used uh, for one patient only and also it should have the date of the first use to be discarded after expiration of the reuse life recommended by the manufacturer For the interview there is uh, here also and uh, other examples for the question you can use it when you are uh, doing the interview with the staff you can ask them uh, indirect or direct question you can ask them about the best practice recommended for use of the cartridge device regarded number of uh, patient how they will be used for uh, multiple patient and also how they will keeping them while uh, they are uh, using and reuse life and also you can ask about the uh, precaution that should be strictly followed when they are using a cartridge device such as insulin pin for a multiple patient again and also you can ask about uh, how can a safely inject a dose from cartridge devices uh, uh, for uh, uh, multiple patient and also you can ask how you deal with the insulin pin after the patient discharge uh, you should be uh, listen for the answer and they should be give you the correct answer that means the cartridge devices uh, such as insulin pin are used only for one patient and it should be labeled with the patient name and medical uh, record number and the date of the first use to avoid uh, use for multiple patient and they will be uh, after expiration of the reuse life recommended by the manufacturer so they should be discarded
sub element uh, B4.9 supply our product to the patient care area only when needed and after patient discharge all remaining single use item are discarded where reusable one are sent to the CSSD for reprocessing even unused item with intact original work for this uh, sub element we need for observation and for staff interview to we can audit and evaluate this sub element for the observation, you need to observe the attitude of the staff member in different patient care area. You need to observe, especially in the ICU, ER, and also uh, for the in ICU. Uh, you need to be uh, sure that the supply and the single use medication is taken for the patient care area only if they will be need and also in the required and uh, necessary number. You should be sure and check if they have put inside this uh, patient area or uh, the patient room they will be put a huge number of uh, items or supply like suction tube or syringe or also sometimes they will put a huge number of gauze or cotton and this is not allowed and also you need to be observed what about the remaining unused supply or a medication what they will be do for the uh, unused single uh, use item they, they should be discarded immediately after uh, the patient discharge or the uh, treatment decision is complete and they never be returned back to the store or they will be used for another patient and also about the uh, reusable items uh, should be sent to the CSSD uh, even if this item it is with the intact original warp.
also you can absorb any ER nerves she have a procedure she will be uh, insert peripheral venous catheter for any patient and you will see if she will provide the supply for the patient for the procedure they, she will be take uh, just only uh, the needed supply or she will be take extra supply and if she will be take the extra supply will be observed if she will be uh, returned back if we meaning for the single uh, use she will be returned back or she will be discarded directly after the finish from the procedure and also if she, if she brought any uh, reusable instrument she will be uh, and if she didn't use this uh, uh, reusable uh, item she will be returned for the start they will be used for another patient or they will be sent to the CSSD you need to absorb this and they should be uh, discarded all the single use item even if she if they didn't use it and the reusable uh, uh, items they should be uh, never they will be returned back to the uh, store or to or they will be used for another patient even if they are not using this uh, uh, an instrument they should be uh, sent it to the CSSD for the interview you need to do the interview with the staff and also you need to ask them uh, here we have some examples for question you can use it to ask and do the interview with the staff you can ask them about uh, what to do uh, with the extra supplies or single use medication that are taken to the patient care area without being used they are not using uh, in the procedure or the treatment decision and and you can uh, tell them that this item it is still unused and with the uh, intact original warp you can ask them also about how you safely handle uh, or disinfect uh, unused extra supply and medication that are taken to the patient care area during the procedure or the treatment decision before being used for the uh, other patient also you can ask them if uh, as a situation in emergency situation what are the rules uh, that should be considered before returning unused extra supply or medication that are taken to the patient care area to uh, the uh, central preparation area you can ask them and they should be give you the correct answer that they told you that the remaining disposable supply or single use medication are discarded immediately even unused one uh, uh, with intact original war and uh, uh, they cannot be used uh, on other patient or return to clean area such as a medical store or the central preparation area also they should be informed that all the reusable item are uh, sent for the reprocessing even unused uh, one with intact original work
sub element B4.10 whenever possible multi dose vial is used for a single patient with, uh, with recorded patient name and date of the first use when it has been accessed for the first time and discarded after 28 days unless the manufacturer specify different shorter or longer date example uh, reuse life for this sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element Sub element B4.11 If multi dose vial is used for more than one patient, it is exclusively kept and accessed in the area specified for the preparation of medication. Uh, it should be away from the patient treatment area. For this sub element, we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. For the observation, you need to check and visit the medication preparation area to be sure if they have or they are used the multi-dose file. And if they uh, are used this multi-dose uh, files and they say to you or the healthcare worker, they say to you that it is for one patient only, you need to be sure that they are following the data and record it on this uh, multi-dose file to be sure it is for one patient. They should be 
write the date of the first use that's mean when it has been accessed for the first time to be uh, discarded after 28 days unless the manufacturer specified a different uh, uh, day and also they should be have the patient name and the medical record number to be used and you'll be sure that it is for one patient and also if uh, uh, multi-dose file are uh, used for the multiple patient you should be sure that the uh, multi-dose file it's have also the same information uh, indicated and needed to be put in this uh, multi-dose file should be have the date of the first uh, use and it is recorded uh, on the vial to be discarded after 28 days unless the manufacturer uh, give another days and also the multi-dose file it should be kept and uh, accessed in the medication preparation area only this multi-dose it should be used for uh, more than one patient and uh, never it should be taken in the patient uh, treatment area it should be kept in the medication preparation area You need also to observe the patient care area and you should be checked if there is any multi-dose vial are used instead of the single dose vial and present in patient care area and uh, this multi-dose vial if it is present in the patient care area you need to observe to ensure that the following information and recorded on the uh, used file they should be put the date of the first use it should be recorded and also uh, uh, it should be patient name and medical record number it's recorded on the uh, used file to be uh, uh, used for only one patient this multi-dose file is never be kept in the patient or treatment area without patient name and medical record number to avoid uh, it will be used as a multi-dose for multi-patient
for the interview you need to do interview with the staff and you need to ask them some question you can ask them if the multi-dose vial available and they are used instead of the single dose vial if they will be answered yes you need to be asking multi-dose vial it's used for only one patient or no if they will tell also it is used for only one patient you need to ask them about what is the essential data required to be recorded on the multi-dose vial and they should give you the correct answer and they know what is this information that should be recorded that it should be the date of the first use and also the patient name and the medical record number to be used for the only one patient and also if uh, they told for you know this multi-dose vial it's used for multiple patients you need to be asked them about what are the precautions that require to be uh, strictly followed uh, while uh, when we are using this multi-dose vial and they should be give you also the correct answer that means the date of the first use it should be recorded on the used file and this file uh, or the multiple dose file it should be kept and uh, accessed only in the medication uh, preparation area and it should be never be uh, taken to the patient uh, treatment area You need also to ask the staff to they will be demonstrate how they can safely obtain those from a multi-dose file that it used for multiple patients. You need to be observe the required supply, correct storage while uh, in use, and also the proper technique with also the labeling uh, with the date and the time and the discarded when indicated.
sub element B4.12, the silt seal trapper cap of the medication pile or an IV solution bottle is disinfected with appropriate antiseptic wipes uh, like alcohol wipes prior to any access for this sub element. We need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. For the observation, you need to visit and check the medication preparation area and the patient care area. You need to observe uh, availability of this supply required for disinfecting the self-sealed rubber cap. And also it should be had with uh, adequate amount and they will be used prior to access uh, any uh, self-sealed uh, rubber cap of medication vial or IP solution bottle. And also you need to observe uh, any healthcare worker they are preparing this medication uh, to ensure that the prior to any access this medication vial or the IV solution bottle uh, the silk seal rubber cap is disinfected with uh, approved alcohol antiseptic wipes and also you need to check the IV solution bottle to be sure that it is only accessed through the silk seal rubber cap after it will be disinfected because uh, Unfortunately, sometimes when we are visiting some hospital, we will find some IV solution bottle. It will be accessed uh, through the side, and this is uh, not acceptable.
for the interview you need to do interview with the staff and you can ask the healthcare worker how can you safely get an access to the content of medication vial or uh, the IV solution bottle or you can ask them also what are the precautions required while handling medication vial or solution bottle to prevent the contamination and they should be give you the correct answer that uh, sterile devices are only used to access the medication file or IV solution bottle with a strictly adherence to the aseptic technique and also they should be uh, informed that prior to any access to the medication vial or uh, IV solution bottle the self-sealed rubber cap it should be disinfected with appropriate alcohol antiseptic wipe and also they should be uh, know about the, 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 the scrub of the self-sealed rubber cap it should be with uh, antiseptic uh, wipes for 10 to 15 seconds and it should be uh, never touch the axis side after it will be applied the uh, antiseptic uh, until this axis it will be uh, dry before entering uh, or accessed by the sterile devices also you need to ask the healthcare worker to they will demonstrate how they can safely obtain those from medication vial or get an access to the IV solution bottle. You will be observed the required supply they will be used and also the right access it should be through the self-sealed rubber cap and also the proper technique with the labeling uh, with date and the time when uh, required and also uh, the changing of the IV solution bottle or discarding a medication vial when indicated. Sub element B4.13 IV sets, including secondary sets and add on devices that are continually used uh, to infuse crystalloid uh, solution like hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic, are replaced at least every seven days but not more frequently than 96 hour intervals. For this sub element, we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element.
sub element B4.14 IV sets that are used to administrate blood or blood product, lipid or dextrose amino acid TP in solutions are replaced within 24 hours of initiating uh, the infusion. For this sub element, we need for observation and for staff interview, so we can evaluate and audit the sub element. For the observation, you need to visit and uh, check the patient care area. And if there is any patient who are not receiving blood or uh, blood product, and this patient he is uh, on infusion of crystalloid uh, solution, uh, check if that IV set administration, including the secondary set and add-on devices, are continuously connected and replaced no more frequently than 96 hour intervals, but at least every seven days. You need also to observe if this patient he is receiving blood or blood product or lipid or dextrose or amino acid that the uh, IV set or IV delivery system are continuously connected and changed with 24 hours of initiating of the infusion. Mm -hmm. And also observe if the IV administration set are labeled with date and time of initiated treatment.
For the interview, we need to do interview and ask the staff how frequently you should re routinely replace the IV administration set that are continuously connected, including the secondary set and the add-on devices, or what are the maximum period allowed for the use of the IV delivery system that are uh, continuously connected, and they should give you the correct answer that the patient who are not receiving blood or blood product or lipid and this patient as example uh, on infusion of kisseloid uh, solution it should be continuously connected IV delivery system and replace it no more uh, frequently than 96 hour intervals but at least every seven days and the patient who is receiving blood or blood product or lipids uh, it should be continuously connected IV administration set change within 24 hours of initiating of the infusion. Sub element B4.15 for ventilated patient ventilation circuit is only changed when visibly soiled or mechanically uh, malfunction. For this, we need four document and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element. For the documentation, you need to review uh, documented evidence that uh, demonstrate proper application of the sub element you need to review the specific policy for the changing of the ventilation circuit in the ventilated patient and this policy it should be multidisciplinary policy it should be approved by medical department respiratory therapy department and the nursing department also you need to check the document that uh, record the event of this uh, changing for the changing ventilation circuit in ventilated uh, patient you need to check or you need to check the patient file and also you need to be check the uh, uh, respiratory therapy logbook because uh, sometimes you will found they have a routine uh, today will be changed as routine not as what we mentioned in the uh, sub element for the interview, you need to do interview and ask the healthcare worker and you will be asked the nurses and also the respiratory therapist. You will ask them how frequently you should routinely change the ventilation circuit in ventilated patient and also what is the maximum period allowed to prevent the VAP. They should give you correct answer and they should be uh, uh, answering like the ventilated patient ventilation uh, circuit is not routinely changed and also they will be changed only if visibly soiled or there is damage or uh, mechanically malfunction.
sub element P4.16, sterile solution are used in nebulizer, humidifiers, or any air solar generation system and change it between patient and every 24 hours for the same patient unless the manufacturer of a ready-made sterile solution specify different days. For this, we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate the sub-element. For the observation, you need to check and visit the patient care area and absorb the availability of supply required for the uh, filling this nebulizer or humidifier or any air solar generating system. And they should be have as example, a ready-made single-use bottle of sterile saline or uh, sterile water. And also you need to be check and sure that only ready-made single-use bottle uh, of sterile solution are used to fill this uh, uh, machine like the nebulizer, humidifier and air uh, solar generating uh, system and also uh, the, the notice if this sterile solution use it for this nebulizer uh, they will be changed between the patient uh, uh, immediately and every 24 hour for the same patient and also you need to observe to ensure that the humidifier or this nebulizer there is label uh, with date and the time of initiating treatment For the interview, you will do this interview with the healthcare worker and you will ask them about supply required for using uh, or filling nebulizer, humidifier or any air solar generating system. And they should be given the correct answer that they are used only the ready-made single-use bottle of sterile saline or water to they will be uh, uh, filling the humidity fires or any air solar generating uh, system. And also you can ask them about the frequently, uh, uh, you should be routinely change the sterile solution used in this machine. And they should give the correct answer that this sterile solution used for uh, fill uh, the nebulizer or humidifier, it should be changed uh, uh, between the patient after each patient and also every 24 hour for the same patient. Ask the staff to they will be demonstrate how they should prepare the uh, inhalation therapy using nebulizer or humidifier or any air solar generating system, and you will be absorbed the required supply they will be used, proper technique with labeling uh, by the date and time of the initiating of the treatment, and the frequency of the changing of this uh, sterile solution. Sub element B4.17 Hand hygiene practice before breast milk expression and sterile container is uh, used for breast milk collection and preservation. For this sub element, we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate this sub element.
for the observation you need to observe the availability of dedicated room and it is only for breast milk expression and also observe availability of hand washing sink and alcohol based hand rub dispenser in the same room this uh, dedicated room for the breast uh, milk expression and also it should be or it will be absorbed the availability of education material uh, and the instruction for the mother to follow and practice the hand hygiene before expression of the breast milk this uh, education material should be have the WHO education tool for the reminders for hand hygiene and also save life clean your hand uh, also and also how to hand rub posters also how to hand washing poster also you need to observe the availability of sterile container to be used for breast milk collection and preservation in the order to avoid any contamination For the interview, we need to do interview with the staff and if you found any mother at the time of visit, you can ask the staff about the procedure, process and the infection control measure to be taken and to be sure that the explicit milk is safe and free from any contamination. Ask also about the mother education in appropriate hand hygiene to be followed and how uh, it is uh, monitored to ensure that the compliance of the mother. Also ask how they are using and implementing hand hygiene you can randomly ask any mother to perform hand rub if you found any mother and also you can ask the staff they do they will show you any container that they are used uh, for the breast uh, milk collection or uh, preservation
sub element B4.18 healthcare worker wear mask during insertion of catheter or injection into spinal or epidural space for this sub element we need for observation and staff interview to we can evaluate and audit this sub element for the observation you need to visit patient care area and check if uh, the invasive procedure into spinal or epidural space are applicable in the unit or not if it is applicable, you need to observe the availability of all supply required for strict adherence to aseptic technique while performing invasive procedure into spinal or epidural space. You need to check they have the antiseptic wipes, sterile gloves, sterile drapes, and also the surgical mask. You need also to check if the aseptic technique including wearing of surgical mask is strictly applied while performing invasive procedure into spinal or epidural space as example inserting catheter or injection into a spinal or epidural space for the interview we need to do interview with the staff and ask them what are the best practice that should be applied while performing invasive procedure into spinal or epidural space as example inserting catheter or injection into a spinal or epidural space and then answer it should be including wearing of surgical mask they should be mentioned uh, the wearing of the surgical mask and also you need or uh, you can ask to they will be demonstrate how they should prepare for the invasive procedure into spinal or epidural space and also uh, what is uh, the required the supply personal protective equipment and the steps for the inserting catheter or injection into the spinal or epidural space and also then answer it should be including the wearing of the surgical mask